Hey there Cubers, my name is Plus2 and welcome back to another episode on the Ender Eye server. This is episode 2 and today we're uh, under, we're down under the base. This is a really interesting view of the base. Looks good. So I've been doing a lot of work between episodes here and most of that has been revolving around uh, this hideous material here, uh, gravel. Gravel is one of the, it, basically gravel is a difficult thing to come up with for concrete, right? Like, I saw the issue with the dye. I, I got, you know, the farms that I need to get dye going automatically. Easy, easy as pie. Uh, sand, I found a desert and you get all the sand you'll ever need. Like, really, <laughs> it's a, there's a lot of sand in those deserts. Gravel is the one that is the difficult one because there's there's several rate several rate there's sev several ways you can get gravel right you can find it in mines you can trade it with piglins using a new trading strategy which is probably what's going to end up being the long term strategy for this but I don't have that set up yet uh, and that would take a lot to get set up because I need to get a gold farm set up first and then once I have that gold farm set up. Then I can set up um, the trading stations with the piglins. Uh, so that's uh, that's a lot of work uh, to get gravel going. So that's not really an immediate solution. Uh, and the other alternative, oh, though, there's the the gravel mountains biome or whatever it's called. And that's a great solution, but those are just extremely hard to find. I looked all over the Din map for this world and I could not find one anywhere. Um, so that was not really gonna work out as a solution for this problem. So what I started working on was getting it to the point where I could um, mine the ocean floors, which is a problem I needed to address in the first place anyway, uh, because as I've said several times, I am going to be removing the various islands that are popping up in the ocean here. <coughs> And in order to do that, I do need uh, respiration and aquafinity and things like that, uh, as well as potions of night vision. Uh, or a conduit, which, again, not really a easy solution. Um, an effective one, yes, but not really one that's very easy to accomplish. So I went ahead and got myself set up. I got... Uh, brewing stand, I actually got that from a village. I didn't realize this could be such a pain in the butt. I got a brewing stand from a village and uh, ventured into nether, found a couple fortresses, got some nether wart for potions, and some blaze powder to uh, make the potions, and we are good to go there. And just a couple of quick enchantments with the enchanting table uh, to get a good helmet that allow me to not die. So that's actually a huge, huge part of what I've been doing um, between episodes here is getting all of that infrastructure set up. This is really, this is really annoying. So I, I also did some other work. That's not the only stuff that I was doing uh, between episodes here. I did some other work. I got this, uh, this is that second orange one that I did just started at the end of last episode, I believe. Uh, so I'm doing all of our brewing stuff. Uh, and I'm making this a, sort of a temporary uh, bulk storage location. I don't really know what I'm going to use this for in the long run, but for right now it's um, housing all my gravel and sand and, uh, and various things like that. So I did a lot of work on that. Um, I finished this gray building here. I got that completely enclosed. And one other thing that I did uh, between episodes here was I worked on the cactus farm. I added, I think, two additional layers to that, so it's now four layers tall. Uh, and I built the walls up to the top, so I don't think I'm actually losing any, uh, any cactus uh, falling on the top of the wall there. I still am probably going to want to build that bigger, but it's, it's a pretty decent size for right now. And I don't quite remember where I w left off last episode, but this is completely uh, filled in. Uh, we've got uh, the nether wart that I went and got. I'm just kind of temporarily in here. And 
this has got three rows of bone meal. Uh, so we're still not to the point where we're actually producing uh, the roses and sunflowers, I think is what they are. Yeah, the red and, red and yellow dye to make the orange dye automatic and everything like that. We're not quite there yet, but we are well underway. And as I said, I built that twice as tall, so it should go uh, a lot faster now. So that's kind of a wrap up of what I've been working on since the last episode here. I think it really dark in here. So now that I have everything set up for the potion stand here, uh, my resource bottleneck is virtually resolved for building these um, these hexagonal units. So I don't need to really worry about that right now. As I said, I'm working on um, automating more of this, like to get the dye, and I'll eventually make a squid farm uh, to get the black dye for that, and that'll help out a lot there. The thing that's been causing me the most issues is enchantments uh, and like gear and such. So I think the next thing to solve is that. So probably the first thing that we're going to be working on in this episode is getting our villager setup started. As I said, I'm not going to do anything too crazy fancy with villagers. Um, I Just a, a basic setup for uh, villager breeders and... Um, Mostly book trades. I might do some armor trades, uh, like to get uh, diamond gear and such, but pretty much mostly just <clears throat> book trades. So that I believe is going to be the first thing we're going to work on. And I was originally intending on using this hexagon for that, but I've already kind of taken over this. So we'll probably have to build a new hexagon, maybe over on the other side there to get started with that. So I think we're going to work on that. And I will cut back when I have some uh, progress updates. Alright guys, welcome back for another check in here. So I don't actually remember if this hexagon existed in the last clip, but if it didn't, there's a new hexagon. Uh, and if it did, well, that hexagon has been filled now. So let me show you what's going on in there. This I think can be changed back to a wooden door now. I like that look much better. I don't like going on here. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do anything here. Maybe some storage stuff. I don't know. But up here, we have... Villagers, lots of them. So I was trying to do some fancy stuff here and like completely separate these two floors. It wasn't working. I was getting really frustrated with it. So uh, I decided to just not worry about it. I got a farmer up here. He's got his own little station, his bed and everything. And then all the other guys are down here. I'll add some more eventually. Like armors and things to for other stuff. I don't know. But for right now, I've just got a bunch of librarians with uh, some good books. I'm not too concerned about the emerald cost, um, like the price of the books that they sell. I'm more concerned about just the pro uh, the books that they actually sell, like what type they are. So they're all mostly pretty good. I got most of the enchantments I need. I think the only main enchantment I use a lot uh, that I'm missing is protection. So I've got fortune, I've got mending somewhere, um, silk touch, unbreaking, efficiency. I got all of the all the really good stuff for tools and stuff. I just need that protection enchantment. But yeah, as I said, we are now hello. <laughs> as I said, we are now facing an alarming shortage of um emeralds. So I, I need a lot more emeralds. Um and with the villagers I have here, the best option is paper for uh for trading with emeralds. So this now being completed leads us into our next project, which is going to be a massive sugarcane farm. And I think that is going to end up being, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Well, how's this doing? It's doing all right. I think this is going to end up being over here. I think I'm going to make another orange hexagon right here, which will house the sugarcane farm. I don't know how big. I want it to be. I'm planning on going with um, Tango Tech's uh, lossless design. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, but I think it should go pretty well. I'm running into an interesting pattern here, which obviously there's going to be a pattern here because I don't want to, at least at this point in time, I don't want to, oh, hello. I don't want two hexagons of the same color next to each other. Uh, 
so it's running into I'm running into an, a, an interesting thing where I've only done one white hexagon so far. It's kind of interesting. I'd like to do another one because <laughs> I like to look at the white one, but yeah, I just haven't needed it yet. I'll need it again soon, uh, but just because of the way I'm expanding, uh, it makes or it just I just haven't needed another one of these. But yeah, I will uh, cut away here and come back when I have some progress on my sugarcane farm. All right, guys, so just take it back in here again. It's been a few days, and some Enderman appears to have stolen my front door there, or the block that was blocking the front door. Anyway, I've made a couple changes. Uh, whoop, is I in here? Perfect. I keep killing these guys because it's free iron. I, I eventually would like to make this into some kind of a makeshift iron farm. Um, the drop weights... <laughs> the drop rates obviously wouldn't be great, but they would be, you know, decent. I've gotten several stacks of iron just from killing these guys. It's been, it has been a few real days though. So, yeah, I got tired of having these guys running all over the place. That didn't take long at all. And uh, I've given them their own little cubbies. Or apartments is probably a better term for it, but cubbies is more accurate. I got a bunch of, a uh, bunch of dudes all over the place. A lot more than I wanted, actually. <laughs> um, I I didn't realize I've learned a lot about mechanics in Minecraft since uh, since the last clip. It would appear that when you lock up a a villager into a cubby and they can't get to their bed anymore, it would appear that they sort of lose their connection with that bed, and so the other villagers that aren't locked up then see that as an open bed and will make a new villager. So they've uh, it's it's gotten out of control a bit, but I have these guys which are great uh, for getting emeralds. I'm still not really planning on doing any uh, converting, uh, like turning them into zombie villagers and converting them back to get better trades. I might eventually do that. Um, I don't really see a point for me to do that. I'm not intending on selling these or anything like that. I just want them. But yeah, so there's been a lot going on here as you can see. Um, I've been trying to mob proof. I've, hello. I have uh, I've learned quite a bit about uh, mob proofing and, and what works and what doesn't work. I, I was always under the impression that putting string down would make it so that mobs can't spawn wherever you put that string down. Uh, I learned that that's not true though. I don't know. I, I mean, this is probably a very common knowledge type thing. But apparently, the way that Minecraft's, Minecraft works with the spawning is... If there is a block to spawn in, Minecraft will then look within like a 20 block radius of that block and spawn something there as long as there's like space to spawn it. So if you want like this area to be spawn proof, I have to put string down on all these blocks here and then every other block within 20 blocks of this area on this level that could spawn something. I don't know, I didn't really realize that. And I don't really want string all throughout my base, so I've got to come up with something different for uh, for mob proofing. But anyway, yeah, put string up on the entire second floor here. Let me see if I can get up there and show you guys. Oh, and right there. <laughs> right on time, zombie, thank you. Uh, yeah, I've put string all over this floor here, like every block that is on this layer here, even there's some internal blocks in here, has a piece of string on it. And yet I'm still getting mobs to spawn up here. So I don't really think I understand that mechanic as, as well as I would like to. Uh, I even went in here in these little gaps between these, uh, these places and uh, put string down and it still still doesn't work. So I'm not super, super sure. The uh, I guess like a last ditch effort would be to try to light up an area um, to, to prevent hostile mob spawnings. But I'd also like to restrict, like I was saying, I'd like to restrict the iron golem spawning so that they only spawn in a specific spot to um, to to uh, make a reasonably effective iron farm, but that it seems to be proving seems to be proving a lot more difficult than I expected it to. 
Um, so that's still a work in progress. Uh, oh, I finished this. <laughs> uh, I did. I did do the sugarcane farm. I was hoping it was gonna be bigger. Uh, <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, it's not. And I might. I don't know. I might go with something a bit, a bit more uh, simple in its design. It's a bit complex. And I might. Yeah, I might go with something a little bit more simple. I uh, used Tango Tech's design, and he, right there, perfect. He claims the design to be lossless, um, <clears throat> and it's not. So I don't know if there's a mechanics change or if I've built it wrong. I know he used um, iron bars in the middle here, and uh, I have used wooden fence door, uh, fence gates. I don't know. That, that shouldn't cause, it, it shouldn't cause sugar cane to get stuck there like i don't see how this being different would affect it getting all the way back there so yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure what to really do about that i might make a simpler farm in hopes of being able to get a larger farm in there since the complexity of that is to have it be lossless which it is not lossless but either way i am going to um, make it bigger i'm going to uh, make it taller just like i did with the cactus farm here and oh gosh we're at the point with the cactus farm as well there's been so much that's been going on it's been crazy it's literally been like three days since that last clip was recorded and if we come through here poop, 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 um this is all full of bone meal, and this is now filling up with bone meal. So the the time is va uh, rapidly approaching where I would need my um, flower farm over here to actually use that bone meal. Uh, and I have not built that yet. So that's going to be something I have to do over the next, I don't know, day or two here to avoid any issues with that. And I keep getting creepers that spawn through here. So I don't know. I really need to address this, uh, this uh, lighting issue. So I've done quite a bit of mining as well uh, between episodes or between clips here, excuse me. Um, and uh, a lot of that was to get stone to trade to the masons for emeralds. Um, I also worked on this area down here. I don't think I've shown this at all. Everything there, no. Um, this is a um, cave spider spawner room area thing. I, I had this set up uh, for a while. Um, I, I've set this up in between the last clip. I had this set up for a while to allow me to stand here and kill them. Um, but then I just made a, a drowned chamber for them to, uh, to get uh, AF cable string coming in, which is how I got all the string to put on the base. Um, I might eventually turn this back into a um, not AF cable farm where I can kill them for XP. I'm not sure about that. I actually have... Uh, I haven't shown it on... Uh, an episode yet, but I do actually have a zombie spawner um, that I use as an XP grinder. It's actually over on a different island. It's not too far away, um, but uh, that's usually where I go when I need uh, XP. Oh, for crying out loud, I had... You know, sometimes I had this dang recording thing up the whole time. Oh well. That's my, uh, that's the replay mod, um, that is, um, recording all my sessions so I can get, uh, footage for time lapses and things like that. So, whoops. Anyway, yeah, there's been a lot going on and I'm not entirely sure what it is I need to work on next because I'm thinking the only way to completely spawn proof uh, passive and hostile mobs my my base area is to put wool down everywhere and i don't really think i want wool going all throughout my base and actually oh i just realized can iron golems can probably spawn in here because they can spawn in water can't they that's like one of the whole basis of the mechanics why isn't that guy moving? He's just sucking at the block. Yeah, so this whole area is spawnable as well. Oh, that's, that might just that just might not work as a as a uh, as an iron farm. Oh, hello. You see what I mean though? We get a lot of them, a lot of them in here. It'd be nice if I could capitalize on that in some way, but 
I just don't see a way to do it. All right, guys, welcome back once again here. Let's do a sync. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, guys, welcome back once again here. And I got to say, I'm completely confused. I've done some more research on mob spawning and will mobs spawn on string. And I, the, the answers are so mixed. And, I, and I've, I've, done, I've done some tests on my own. And from what I can tell, yes, string does nothing to prevent mobs from spawning. I don't know if that's right. I have no idea. But it seems to be correct, and I've seen places say that it does stop them from spawning. I've seen videos say that, uh, I think what I was talking about last time, where it'll stop them from spawning if you have every block covered in string on the same, uh, like, Y level? Or Z level? Whatever that, the upwards, like the same up and down level. If you have every block within a certain radius covered with string on that level... Uh, they won't spawn. Um, that does not appear to be true, at least at this point in time. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes to the way mobs spawn in Minecraft, so I'm sure I'm getting different answers based on the different versions. However, based on my tests, it does not appear that string prevents mobs from spawning, and it certainly doesn't prevent um, iron golems from spawning, which is what I want to do. So I think I've pretty much resigned myself to the fact that I'm going to need to cover the tops of all of these structures with wool. So I think the very next thing that I do is going to be to build some type of a wool farm, make a brand new hexagon for the farm and create a wool farm so I can get carpets to carpet the tops of these and just be done with it. I mean, I didn't, I de definitely didn't want to go that route. Um, but I think it'll look, I, I even think it'll look better than having string everywhere like this. Cause I really don't like, I really don't like any of this, but that I think is going to be the next thing that we're going to do. However, that's going to be something we have to do. going to have to do in the next episode. I have run out of time for it today. I want to get this episode out this weekend. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode here. We did quite a bit. We got a lot, I got a lot of work done with the uh, the villagers in there. We got started on the sugarcane farm, which actually I started working on adding a second layer to that. So hopefully that works out well. And um, we did the string farm downstairs. So that will also help with groups with um, creating the wool to make the carpet. So hopefully that goes well, uh, but we will explore all that in the next episode. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.